Hello, this video demonstrates the quadrant streak method for isolating bacteria in pure culture. You may come across a number of different variants of this technique. The reason that we've selected this one to teach you is that whether you start with a very dense culture of bacteria or a sparse culture with very few bacteria, using this technique you will always end up with isolated colonies. Now in nature, bacteria don't normally grow as a single pure culture, they normally grow in a mixture. So if you're given an environmental sample or a clinical sample and your job is to identify the important bacteria in there, you will need to isolate a single bacterial colony, pure culture, from this mixture. In this video, we're going to show you how to isolate this single pure culture. Now bacteria can grow in a liquid culture or they can also grow on solid media. The easiest way to isolate a pure culture is to streak them out onto the surface of the solid media, diluting out the bacteria till you get single cells on the surface of the agar. These single cells will then each grow up when incubated to produce an isolated colony. And these single isolated colonies are all derived from one cell. You therefore know that you're working with a clone or a pure culture of bacteria. In this video, um, you'll learn how to streak out the bacteria and how to work with bacteria aseptically. First thing to do is to light your Bunsen burner. Turn on the gas, make sure the air hole is closed, and use the gas lighter provided to light the gas. This, when the air hole's closed, the gas and the flame will be cold and yellow. When you want to use it, open the air hole up, and you'll get a nice bright blue cone of gas. Before you start work, the first thing you need to do is sterilize your loop. So pass your loop through the flame, pulling it up through the top of the blue cone until it goes red hot, remove it from the cone and allow to cool. Do not put it down on the bench. Using your flamed and cooled loop, take a plate and remove an isolated colony from the plate. Place the lid. You're now going to streak this onto a brand new agar plate. First, you make a primary streak onto the plate. It's important now to flame your loop again. So draw your loop slowly up through the flame to remove any bacteria from it. Cool your loop. If necessary, cool the loop onto the plate just to make sure it's cool. Then take one streak across the plate from this primary streak. Continue with three more streaks below it. It's important now to flame your loop again as before. Cool your loop and repeat this process taking one streak from each of the four across your agar plate. At each point where you rotate the plate you need to cool, flame and cool your loop. By doing this you are diluting the number of bacteria that are on the loop and therefore reducing the amount of bacteria across the plate. Finish with a streak down the centre of the plate. Replace the lid and always finish by flaming your loop to avoid any contamination. To inoculate from a broth culture, use the same technique as before. By holding the test tube, we remove the cap with a little finger. Make sure you flame the neck of the test tube through the Bunsen burner using your cooled and flamed loop. Remove a drop full, a loop full of bacteria. Place the lid. You then streak this out onto the plate as before, making your primary streak and then flaming your loop. Rotate the plate, pull your loop, take one streak from the primary streak across the plate. 
remember to flame when you rotate the plate, continue streaking across in order to dilute your bacteria. Always flame your loop at the end. In order to recap what we have just done, you can see a detailed diagram of the pattern your loop should make on the plate. Note the areas where you should flame. When you've finished streaking your plate, it's important to label it with your initials, the type of media you've used and the date. This will enable you to find your pl plate in the next practical. Then place your plate ready for incubation inverted into the basket with the appropriate label and temperature. You need to incubate your plates at the appropriate temperature. Think also, do I need culture conditions that are aerobic with oxygen or anaerobic in the absence of oxygen? Remember, your incubation conditions will define which bacteria you recover. We shall then put the plates for you in an incubator for the required length of time. This is normally overnight at 37 degrees C for clinical and mammalian samples and 25 degrees C for several days for environmental samples. Following incubation, you should be able to see single isolated colonies. On this chocolate blood agar plate, you can see different colony morphologies of different bacteria. On this plate, you can see the small off-white colonies of Staphylococcus and the larger smooth colonies of E. coli.